So last year was not the best when it came to uploading videos to the channel. I'd mostly been working on filming some makerspace videos with a laser cutting and 3D printing video in the works. But as those are new topics for me, I was, you know, struggling to get the videos finished. So I thought I'd just go back to basics and make a PC build video. And I thought that a good metaphor for reviving the channel would be to revive my somewhat neglected workstation. But first, this video was brought to you by VIP SCD Key. If you head over there using my link in the description box below, you'll find they offer cheap OEM Windows 10 keys, for which you can use my discount code TPC, which gives you 25% off, bringing the price down to 17 US dollars. And once activated, you'll be able to upgrade to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Office 2019, which you'll be able to get for only 50 US dollars using the code TPC. So back to the video. So this build was originally completed in 2020 and I've been using it every single day since. Its big feature is its four giant 200mm Noctua fans, which create a vertical wind tunnel of airflow. It ended up being used in a couple of RTX 3080 videos and I never really put it back together properly afterwards. Since then, as I'm sure you can tell, it's not really been very looked after. I'm honestly kind of embarrassed. It's reminding me of that viewers PC I took a look at back in 2022, but with more screws. <laughs> so I really love the airflow concept of this build and I want to stick with it, but I'm actually concerned that it hasn't aged very well. For example, there's a lot of space where I don't need it, like below the motherboard, but not a lot of space where I do. And as a result, I might not be able to fit newer GPUs in this case. But I think the first thing that I want to do with this build is take it almost entirely apart as that'll be the only way to really get these parts clean properly. And then from there, I can make some decisions on what I want to do in terms of upgrades. So this is the motherboard from the workstation PC with everything still installed. It's an Aorus X570 Master with a Ryzen 3900X and 64 gig of DDR4 3200 memory. And the idea is to upgrade to this platform from my test bench. And this is an Asus ProArt Z690 and I have an Intel 12900K installed on it. This would be a huge upgrade in terms of CPU performance. And I'd also benefit from better built-in connectivity like a 10 gigabit ethernet port and Thunderbolt. But there is a couple of potential issues here that I need to look into first. The first is that to keep with the airflow of the case, I need to rotate the cooler 90 degrees compared to what would be considered traditional. And on my X570 motherboard, this actually required a specific mounting kit that wasn't included with the cooler. And the second potential issue is with memory clearance. As you can see, I'm using a low profile kit on the old board, but I don't actually own any low profile kits for DDR5. So let's work out if this cooler can be rotated and then go from there. So unlike with AMD mounts, Intel mounts are normally square. So the hope is that all I've got to do is rotate these metal brackets 90 degrees and it should be fine. I'm sure this is a question that the cooler instruction manual would have answered for me, but sometimes it's more fun to find out things for yourself. And yeah, this works. So with the cooler installed, I can immediately tell that memory clearance is gonna be an issue with any of the DDR5 kits that I own. The first slot would have to be very low profile. The second slot though doesn't seem too bad and I could perhaps install a stick there if I remove the cooler first. So I was right and I can install some more height memory in slot two if I lift the cooler first. But you can see just how close this gets. In fact, I think that if this memory had a flat top and was as tall as its highest point all the way along, then I don't think it would clear this little metal clip on the bottom of the cooler. So this is what I'm thinking. I need to buy new memory for the system anyway, because I only have 32 gig kits of DDR5. And my old setup had a 64 gigabyte set of memory. So that's the minimum that I'm after. And I think the plan is gonna to be to ignore slot one for now, because that'll be a really tight fit. And then I can just focus on a two module kit that will go in slots two and four. So perhaps a two times 32 gigabyte kit or a two times 48 gigabyte kit. The G-Skill Z5s are 44 millimeters tall. So to play it safe, I'm gonna want nothing taller than 42 millimeters. So time to go shopping. Using PC Part Picker, I can sort modules by first word latency which is a good way of combining both memory frequency and timings into one comparable number. 
And what's winning is this set of Corsair Vengeance DDR5 6600CL32. Especially as Corsair Vengeance is only 35mm tall. And we'll look at home in a workstation. So that's what I've chosen. Now these are strictly compatible with my 12900K or Z690 Pro Art. But if I can get away with it, I'd much rather buy a higher speed kit that will perform well on future motherboard and CPU upgrades. Even if that means running them at a slower speed on my current hardware today. I'm risking instability here, but I think it's worth the risk. <laughs> and with this purchase, I'm also upgrading to 92 gigabytes, which I am very excited about. It's kind of mind blowing to me that you can have this level of capacity with only two DIMMs and that I still have two empty slots for future expansion if I switch to a different cooling setup. So now that the memory is sorted, the next issue I need to solve is how I'm going to fit a GPU upgrade in here. My two routes really are either to switch to a new case or to switch to a smaller power supply. I did look for a new case and there are plenty I like, but I'm just not ready to give up on the four times 200 millimeter Noctua fans yet. Like, I just, I love this too much. So I think the best option is going to be to switch to a smaller power supply, as my current power supply is a Cooler Master V1000 Platinum, which is just over 200mm in length. So if, just for measurement purposes, I install this entry-level 160mm power supply, it seems like with the power supply cover and everything, it would just be about possible, but that it would be a really tight fit cable management-wise. So ideally I want something shorter than 160mm, perhaps even going SFX with an adapter if needed. But shopping for a PSU took me down a bit of a rabbit hole in regards to power supply efficiency. Basically, there's a competitor to 80 plus called Cybernetics. And whilst my current V1000 Platinum power supply scores both an 80 plus Platinum and a Cybernetics Platinum, these ratings are actually for 115 volt regions. An 80 plus did not test this power supply with 230 volts at all. But Cybernetics did. And guess what it's called? A bronze. Yep, if you live in the UK or the EU or any other 230 volt region, this expensive high end power supply is bronze rated according to Cybernetics. Cybernetics do test more factors and it's power factor, which seems to be where my power supply on 230 volts falls short. I do prefer Cybernetics to 80 plus because they do more for our testing. But even products that use the cybernetic certifications can be misleading in 230 volt regions. For example, I'm shopping for a 1000 watt power supply. So if I compare these two Silverstone units, it essentially costs £80 extra to go from a cybernetics gold power supply to a cybernetics platinum power supply. However, these badges are for the 115 volt tests. And when you look at the 230 volt results, both power supplies scored a platinum. So if I went with the more expensive power supply, I would have spent all that extra money to upgrade from a platinum to a platinum. <laughs> but power supply manufacturers seem to just pick and choose which badge or rating to use. Only very occasionally will you find a power supply which has all the badges on the product page, which is how it should be. But this is rare, and I think not having 115 volts written on the certification badge is misleading. And I hope that both Cybernetics and 80 Plus upgrade their designs to include it. But anyway, the power supply that I decided on in the end is the FSP Hydro TI Pro 1000 watts, and it's only 150 millimeters long, which should hopefully be compact enough. It's also rated Cybernetics Titanium at 230 volts and A++ for noise, which means it should be really quiet. The only thing I'm not a fan of is that it has a 12 volt high power connector instead of the new 12 volt 2x6 connector, which will replace it and fixes the issue of the connector melting if the cable isn't seated fully. FSP does have new power supplies coming with a new connector, but unfortunately I couldn't wait for them. But all in all, this is a really high-end power supply, and essentially I'm upgrading from a bronze tier product to a titanium level product, which is also one of the best review power supplies that you can buy. So let's hope it fits well. So it's time for a GPU upgrade. And for this, I'm going with an RTX 4070 Ti Strix from Asus. Now, this isn't strictly a GPU that I own. It's Asus's and they want it back. And I'm expecting an email about it any day now. 
But for now, it's the perfect car for this build, so I'm using it. <laughs> it still amazes me how large GPU coolers have become. But this 4070 Ti Strix actually has a shrunk down version of the cooler that you'd find on the flagship 4090 Strix. It's not as thick or as tall as that, but it is as long, which is where I was running into issues with my case and power supply. But as long as you can fit them, these oversized coolers this generation are great. They run cool and quiet. Nvidia and Asus just announced the super version of this card, which should be the same price as this one, but has a pretty significant bump in specs. So that's the one to get if you're interested in a card like this one. And for my OS drive, I'm going to upgrade to this 4TB WD SN850X. It's PCI 4.0, which is plenty fast enough, because this board doesn't have any PCIe 5 M.2 slots anyway. But the big upgrade here is that I'm going from a 1TB OS drive to a 4TB OS drive. This cost me more than I was expecting because unfortunately SSD prices are set to go up this year and that's already begun. If I'd bought this just a month prior, it would have been £100 cheaper than what I paid, which sucks. And lastly, before I install the motherboard in the case, I actually swapped back to my old non-Chromex NHU12A cooler just because this saves my Chromax for the test bench and the CPU cooler fans will continue to match the look of the big 200mm ones. Also, the heatsink was looking a bit weathered, so I bought a new Chromax cover for it, and I went with a black version. I think these covers are a great way to neaten up and customise these coolers. So the power supply is now installed, and I can immediately tell just how much more compact this is than my previous one. I've cable managed it in a way that allows me to slide on the power supply cover at its highest possible mounting point. I've tried not to put too much of a bend on the GPU power cable, a little bit was unavoidable, but as I'm not going to be running a 4090, this should be fine. So with the power supply cover on and the GPU installed, you can see just how much space this ROG Strix 4070 Ti has to spare. I couldn't fit a card any longer than this one directly into the PCIe slot. The plan is to switch to a riser cable at some point, because that was the original concept I have for the build. And there's a lot more room in the bottom section of this case, and having the card mounted vertically means it's less of a barrier to the case's airflow. So, a bit of bad news, but not unexpected. The system isn't stable with memory running at full XMP speed. However, it is stable so far if I enable XMP to set the timings and voltage, but then turn the frequency manually down to DDR5 5600. And this survives stress tests, but only time will tell if it's stable long term. And with this, I was able to score 1,507 in Cinebench, which is a 41% improvement over how the system was at the beginning of the video. So yeah, this is the build upgrade complete for now. I say it's a build upgrade, but really I've changed every single component apart from the case, the nocturnal cooling and the storage drive. <laughs> so really, this is a new system for me for 2024, and I'm looking forward to editing many videos on it including the one that you're watching right now. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so, so much to my incredible, incredible patrons. And thank you all for watching. Goodbye.